war. War never changes. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic, dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn, training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business, under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House, and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. <laughs> Guess who's waking up over here? Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink, dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Hello, so that was the intro to Fort New Vegas. Um, I think one of the main things I wanted to say about this is that this is my absolute favourite game probably ever in the world. Um, without any shadow of a doubt by a million miles. Um, it's more of the, the aesthetic and the the, the wherewithal of the developers to actually build a world from scratch, you know, from the bottom up and build it with logic and with care and with the writing talent that Obsidian Entertainment actually has. Um, this is the, the best of both worlds, and I've said that before about Mass Effect 2. Uh, Mass Effect 2 is the best of both worlds with Bioware and EA, so Bioware had the same talent that they had, most of the, most of the talent that, that they had from their earlier games, coupled with EA's money and no interference created by Mass Effect 2. Well, um, the only thing Mass, uh, Fallout New Vegas had going against it was that it was developed in a year and a bit. You know, uh, um, Obsidian Entertainment had like a year to make this game. And um, Bethesda forced them to make this game that quickly and then release it. And they said, if you don't hit 85 on Metacritic, then you're not getting any, any bonus pay for it, which is what they were relying on to basically keep the, keep the lights on. And they got 84. And of course, Bethesda then Renee said, "No, we're not paying you. You didn't hit 85. 85. 
Um, but the main reason it didn't hit 85 is because this game came out in a broken state. It had only been, it only been developed for a year and a bit on release. Um, subsequently, it's become probably one of the best games I've ever played in terms of atmosphere, in terms of writing. And if, you, if you're watching me play this and you, you're not quite getting into it, what I suggest is that you turn the lights down and you just watch and you just take, try and just take it in. Just take it in. Because it is an astonishing game and if you've never played it before and you have the means to please go out and buy it please go out and play it um mod it to your heart's content i've mod this is going to be a heavily modded playthrough as we go through um and i've waited years to do this i've waited years to go through fort new vegas um i've played it so many times okay i i've got a, i've got 700 plus hours logged on steam of new vegas i've never completed it because I've never wanted to. Because I've never wanted it to end. It always makes me feel a bit icky that I might, you know, I'll finish it and then never come back to it again. But that has a flip side to it in that I'll start playing the game and I'll get bored because I've, I've gone through the same things over and over and over again. If I take you guys through it though, then I'll go all the way through it and I will finish it. This time, I, this is going to be my only finished Fart New Vegas game. My only one. And it's going to be online, which is going to be awesome. It's going to be on YouTube, which is fantastic. So, who are we playing as? Well, we're playing as a man called Jacob Flagg, who wasn't born when the uh, when the Great War happened in 2077. Um, when the Great War did happen, his great great grandparents were on a flight over Colorado. Going towards Las Vegas for a, for a holiday, for a vacation, if you're American, and um, it crashed into the mountains there. And over long, 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 long years, they broke down to what can only be described <clears throat> as a tribal society. This tribal society took over a certain place in Colorado, in a certain bunch of mountains. Called the Cheyenne Mountain Complex, which is a military installation in the in the Cheyenne Mountains in Colorado, and they became a tribe known as the Broken Wings for the for the plane that crashed. Um, they became expert marksmen because obviously a lot of the U.S. soldiers from inside joined with these people from their from their crashed plane, and they developed a very strange pseudo English accent and that's because nearly everybody on this huge jetliner was British so this will cover up my deficiencies of having a really bad American accent that no our Jacob flag speaks with a British accent because his parents his grandparents and their parents spoke with a British accent and he'd a lot of the American soldiers speak with a pseudo British accent in this place now uh, the you know their descendants speak of the pseudo British accent. It just became the dom dominant accent in this little region. There's one unfortunate thing for this area, in that it's in Colorado. Now Colorado itself is a lovely place, lovely part of the world, from what I've heard. But there's one particular group of people in Colorado. Who let's just say don't really appreciate tribal cultures very much. That'll be Caesar's Legion. As you just saw in the intro, Ron Perlman, Ron Perlman, the god that is, was discussing Caesar's Legion, and they are from um, Arizona. Normally, nominally, uh, they were they were brought to heal. Load of tribes brought to heal by a man named Caesar, who called himself Caesar, and. He sent the legion out against all sorts of tribal, diff different tribes that were in the, the, the Midwest and the Central Plains of, of America. Um, and eventually they made their way to the Cheyenne Complex. And they were talking seven or 8,000 people against maybe 300, 200, maybe. Um, and the broken wings were completely wiped out to a man. And the complexes were looted and burned in the Cheyenne Mountain by the Legion. 
Most of the children were taken captive, and Jacob was one of these. When he was given the designation, designation Sejanus Varus, because most of Caesar's legion take uh, their names from Roman Roman names, so he was named Sejan Varus and Sejanus Varus, sorry, and he only actually earned that name through countless, well, not countless years, but years and years and years of constant training, um, constant drill work, constant torture by the hands of his superiors until he finally became a full legionary. But he didn't just stop there. When he became a full legionary, he was fully indoctrinated in the way of Caesar Legion, in so much as that he doesn't really like abnormal people. He doesn't like super mutants, he doesn't like ghouls very much. Um, but there was a deep seed in him where he remembered his family, he remembered his mum and dad, he remembered you know, his family in the Cheyenne Mountains. Eventually, he became very, very good at behind enemy lines wet work, as in uh, being a scout, being a a ranger, and being an assassin when need 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 arose. Until one day, his combat record was exemplary, and one day, he was brought to Caesar's tent, where Caesar told him he would be the first of the Frumentari, which is a new a new squad, a new type of troop within the Legion. These would serve as um, essentially uh, shock troops and behind enemy lines, assassins and operate operators and, and things like that. People who would go behind enemy lines and generally make an example of the enemy where need be. And he would do this for a few years. He would, he would do this for, for quite a few years as uh, one of Caesar's main frumentari. He would be you know, recognised as one of the absolute uh, pinnacles of the frumentari, of, of, the, of the actual uh, form. And he would actually have with him a squad, a squad of people who were with him, who, who formed the first of the frumentari. Um, these are people who um, essentially were the first little, little band of assassins that Caesar, Caesar uh, made. And so he was the centurion of the Frumentari. So he was centurion Sejanus Varus. Okay, underneath him he had legionary prime Vulpes and Coulter, legionary Cullen, legionary Ulysses. Legionary Gaban, Legionary Picus, Legionary Cato, and Legionary Harlan. They would actually have another name. They were called the Legion Jackals unofficially, although Caesar tried to stamp that out because it had a had a, an air of tribal affinity about it. But the name stuck. They were the Legion Jackals. And they would assassinate, murder, cleanse, generally do anything that, that Caesar wanted to do. Mostly, Sejanus headed up the scouting wing, whilst Vulpes and Coulter headed up the assassination wing. Eventually, the methods of Vulpes and Coulter became more and more and more extreme, and he became more and more and more obsessed with getting the job done and spreading terror and spreading the coming of the Legion. He became more and more fanatical in his belief of Caesar. Whereas Sejanus actually pulled back and began sparing people and began reverting back to his tribal identity. Even all of the training that Caesar, Caesar's legion had put him through couldn't erase the fact that he'd lost his family. He'd lost everybody. Until one day, he killed three men of his unit and ran. Ran as fast as his legs could take him to the Colorado River. There, he was shot in the back by a, leg by a legionary, unknown legionary, and he attempted to swim across. And he ended up washed up ashore, having stripped himself of his armour and all of his worldly possessions to get across in the current. He washed up on shore, on the California side, 
of the on the Varda side, sorry, of the Colorado River. There, Rangers from the NCR picked him up, patched him up. He kept his identity a secret. And eventually, he found work as a caravan guard. Got a quite good reputation as doing that. In, uh, around the Mojave Wasteland, around Las Vegas. That was now called New, New Vegas. He never went to New Vegas and they could never afford it. And from scrimping out his way as a normal caravan guard, he ended up, taking, he ended up becoming a courier for the Mojave Express. Taking packages all the way across the wasteland and making sure that you know, the supply lines were kept clear. He even went to places like the Divide and other places like that. And when the first battle for Hoover Dam occurred, he stayed out of the conflict. He was on his own. He was a courier. Didn't care much. Didn't want anything to do with Caesar Legion. If they'd have won the battle, he would have just gone further west into the NCR lands, as far away as he could go, away from the Legion. That all changed in the video you just saw, where this courier, Courier 6, Sejanus Jacob Flack, was accosted and shot in the head twice by an assailant. We pick up our story where he's just woken up in the home of the local doctor in a local town called Good Springs, who's barely managed to save his life and has rehabilitated him over the course of a few months. This is the story of Jacob Flagg. 